Hey guys, I'm Coco. Welcome to 10 awesome survival tips for RimWorld. So, I've been playing RimWorld for a long time now. I have over 200 videos on my channel and they are since since Alpha 9, I believe, yes. And I've been playing the game since before then. So I do have some experience in how to survive in RimWorld and hopefully these kinds of tips will actually help you survive as well. Now they are not your general tips that you will get from everyone, how to build something, what to build first and something like that. No, they're just gonna be minor life improvement tips that might go a long way in helping you do way better than you did before. So let's talk about cover. So most of you know that you get bonus cover if you stand behind walls or sandbags. So let's let's see how this works. Let's send this guy up here. Congo, go there. As you can see, if I hover over in, now you can see shot by Congo 18%. And you can see shooter, weapon, cover. As you can see, all that helps. Now what you don't know, that most people don't know, I should say, that if you build if you build, let's see, who is in darkness now? We have constructed roof over here. This place is lit a bit. And I is completely in dark. So let's go here. If I hover over this, you can see darkness gives additional bonus to cover. So what you can do is when you build your defenses, just build a roof over it, keep it dark, and your guys will be in cover for more than you would just be behind sandbags or just walls. Let's talk about comfort. So comfort is very very nice mood buff for your colonists. And lots of people don't know that you actually use dining chairs or just normal chairs at the crafting tables and they will increase the comfort rate of your people who stand here all day. So let's try this out. Lying here has been comfortable for a while. Now let's have you go work on this. Let's have you run for some steel. Let's grab that. Let's have it work there. It's gonna take a while, still just comfortable, bringing some stuff in. Okay, let's have it work here. Let's see, now he's sitting and now he's very comfortable, or she is. As you can see, if you click on the chair and on info, you can see it has comfort, 0.77. The better the chair is, the better the comfort. So pay that in mind and always put some chairs at the crafting tables. It will help you a lot in the long run. Another very useful thing when talking about crafting tables is the radius where these people can get actual materials. So let's talk about stone, stone cutters table because these stone chunks can be all over the place and when they are not near people will go on the other side of the map to actually get them. If you go here on the stone cutters table and you go into the details you have the low uh, ingredient radius. And right now it's the whole map. But you can bring it down in a circle around here. So you can do this circle as small as you want or as big as you want. So right now I just want them to take from this stockpile and don't run too far away. So let's do that and that should make this work way better. Another good way to save some time is to have a nighttime cook. Right now everyone else is asleep and we already have one guy cooking. Why is that? He can prepare more meals for the next day without any interruptions. So in the morning there's gonna be enough meals for everyone and he can just go to sleep. And the next night he can just repeat that. If he cooks during the day, he's gonna be interrupted all the time. If he gets to his uh, assigned meal size and then someone takes one meal away, he's gonna run back and do it all over again. So it's way worth the time to just have one cook over the night. Too many animals can be quite a burden. They will eat a lot of food, but you might not get as much use from them. One of the exceptions are actual boars. Wild boars and pigs are very useful because you can train them. You can train them to haul because they have very advanced uh, training, trainable intelligence. This guy here cannot be trained to haul because he's too small still. But one other thing while they're very useful is because they, they're gonna reproduce very fast. If you have two boars or two pigs, they will start reproducing really fast and in no time you'll have a lot of haulable animals. Animals that can haul as you can see here. I started with three boars I believe and in less than a year I'm down to I don't know how many actual boars, more than 20 probably. 
so they are one of the most useful animals you can have. Another very useful animal can be, surprise surprise, a boomalope. Yes, why? Because they will give you quite some meat for the size of this animal and, and their leather sells pretty good. The trick is to go and hunt it in rain. Why? Because it explodes and the rain will automatically just put out the rain and you can, I mean the fire and you can just grab it and bring it home. As you can see, that's the trick. You go and hunt boomalops in the rain or else. Also, uh, if you tame the boomalops and try to slaughter them on your own, it's not gonna end badly. Why? Well, it is gonna end badly. <laughs> Just because they're gonna explode as well if you do so. There we go. The boomalops are cold. And now you'll have a bunch of nice meat. There you go. A very useful idea that's not actually my own, that's one I got from uh, Reddit, RimWorld subreddit, you should go check that out, uh, is you can go, that's especially useful for early game, you can go and put a growing zone under some trees and bushes, let's see, let's do it like that, and then you go and you disallow sowing, people will not sow anything here, but your growers and your plant cutters will automatically go here and they will harvest anything that is harvestable here like this agave when it's gonna be 100% grown they will automatically go here and harvest it you can use that to harvest many berry bushes and stuff like that it's gonna be can be very very useful in the beginning of the game and you don't need to automatically assign anything else than just that a lot of new players actually struggle with area placements so let's see how we can work around that Let's go and make a new area, let's set a new area, let's name it area 2, that shall be fine. And right now it is not assigned to anything. So if I want to, let's say, tell our people that I don't want them to go visit the graves, I can go here and I can expand the area to, to let's say this, but now this is the allowed area, people will go in here. What you can do is you can go to your um, jurisdiction, manage areas, you can go to area 2 which is now let's see now that's how we shall see it area 2 you can see it highlighted right here and now we can invert it and people that are assigned assigned to area 2 can go everywhere but in that small spot and i can assign them so they will never visit the graves but they will be everywhere else wind turbines can be very useful for your power generation but you have to pay in mind that they get blocked by walls, they get blocked by trees, and uh, you can prevent that by just putting the floor underneath. Most commonly used is just cheap wooden floor, and nothing will grow there, and they can work properly. If you just put wooden floors in here and in here, it shall be fine. You can also put solar generators, I can see here, you can put it down there, or you can put growing zones and it will not be blocked. Just don't put your trees in the that growing zone, and it all shall be fine. A trick a lot of people actually use to avoid the annoying power cut problem, which can happen if your batteries are too full. As you can see, I have a couple of full batteries here, so it's always a danger that that power cut will happen and I will lose all the power here, which can be very annoying if you're dealing with a raid and you have all your turrets on, but you cannot provide enough power for them at the time. So what a lot of people use is have a separate set of batteries, you can fill them up and then put a power switch in between and when they're full, you just switch this off and they will be here for your emergency needs. So if you lose power at the very important moment, you can just switch this on and you will have enough power for the grid. So that's gonna be all for now, Th those are the tips, hopefully you learned something new today, something useful that will help you survive. And if you have any other tips that you would like to share with the community, don't be afraid to put a comment down below and tell us about it. There's a lot of tips that new users can learn from stuff like this. And if you wish to, I have a, currently a new RimWorld series going. It's a modded series. Uh, the thematic is the Expanse, uh, the Expanse TV series. So there's lots of interesting things going on. If you would like to see that, go check it out. It's on my channel. 
and it's gonna be very interesting but for now thank you all for watching I do hope you enjoyed this and if you did please consider dropping a comment down below should like subscribe and see more do your magic and i'll see you next time Cook out